So, welcome. Um, we are happy to have you here um, this late evening. And um, Christian and I are going to have a conversation about the topic sustainability and purpose. Um, to me, I'm Lisa. I work at the Unternehmertum and um, I coach student teams um, who are doing business design projects. Um, and what my attempt is, is um, to teach them or to give them the right equipment to find sustainable business ideas. Um, and then I would like to ask Christian to introduce him shortly. Okay, so I'm also working at Unternehmertum and I'm there responsible for educational formats for students around, let's say, innovation and entrepreneurship, tech talents for the ones who are more interested in depth and also about creating new formats um, in the same field for uh, professionals and corporates. And apart from that, I'm also working as a coach and uh, trainer, independent coach and trainer, also with a special focus on CSR and sustainability. Nice, so we would like to start. Christian, uh, what does sustainability mean to you and how did it capture your attention first? Um, concerning that, I would rather, I would like to tell you a little bit my personal story because then it becomes more, maybe more understandable how I got there. Um, I grew up in, in, a, in a household of academics, of scientists in a scientific institute in the middle of nowhere. So that was kind of strange. And my parents, they were um, biologists. And especially my father was very much in those days already involved in uh, topics around environmental protection. Um, and being a professor, he was in many functions for governments, for uh, NGOs in different roles, um, always about setting up wildlife sanctuaries or giving, uh, let's say formal statements about, um, let's say certain, certain, certain fields. Um, and what I learned from that time that there was a very vehement discussion very, very often going on. It was very much a fight, I would say, between different positions. And I was always wondering why it has to be so, uh, I would say, aggressive. Um, because I thought, well, actually, in the end, we all want the same, right? I mean, we want to have and create a world which is worthwhile to live in. And they were really fighting. And that was something which, which always annoyed me so much because I thought there must be other ways to, to approach the topic. And um, many years later, I decided to not go in the scientific area. Um, I studied very much uh, yeah, topics in the interdisciplinary field. Um, I worked as a, as a strategy consultant. It was my second function at a big automotive company. And there I, I came across the topic of corporate social responsibility. It was in the late 90s. So it wasn't really a, a topic yet at that time, not at all. But I found it so, so valuable. I mean, think about it. All of a sudden, a company is not only there for generating profit, but to also be a responsible partner in environmental and or ecological and social aspects. So I found that super important. And as I worked in the strategic function, my, fun my role was very often about, let's say, evaluating and analyzing new topics. And I found that very relevant. The only problem was that my management didn't find it so relevant. But I didn't want to give up very fast. So I thought about how, how can we, let's say, tackle that. And, and that was the big issue um, um, to how to do that and, and, and how to find a mode, let's say, to, to, to do good things in those fields, but without maybe fighting, yeah? But let's say in a positive way to convince people, yeah. Nice. So um, you worked in the field of sustainability and CSR, like you told before. Um, what, you, what were your experiences in, the, in that? Well, I, I would say the, the most important point was um, in that moment then, okay, what 
can I or what can we do? Uh, so maybe the interesting story for you is, and I think that that's, that was relevant at that time, and I think it's relevant at any time, um, how can we do that? How can we create and find those win-win situations? So what I did there, and that's what I advise for most people is uh, simple things, um, find alliances. Who else is interested in the topic? So in that case, um, there was this one guy and he was working for environmental protection for plants. And he was very knowledgeable in that field. I didn't have any clue, but he was really good. And there was another person I found in the communication field and that person also liked that topic very much and thought, well, we have to do more. Yeah. And out of that, um, we looked for ways and the ways we found were quite interesting because as I said, it was not about, oh, we have to do more, but what could, can be the win-win situation? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And the win-win situation we found basically in three fields. Uh, and the, mo the, the most important field was one uh, I was totally enthused and uh, fascinated by it because the biggest supporter we found were the, the people from investor relations. And usually you wouldn't think about investor relations if you think about the topic of sustainability. But at that time I came across, uh, let's say, new questioners from companies working for new indices of, 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 share, of shares. So it, there was a, a new index of Dow Jones, Dow, Jax, Dow Jones Sustainability Index, and there was another one being set up uh, from FTSE, FTC for good, FTSE for good. And they were asking for information from companies and there weren't very many co companies who, who liked those questions. And I thought, hey, that, that is a chance. And then we worked together with the investor relations people on those topics. And the cool thing was that by doing that, answering the questions, we got, let's say, a ranking. And those rankings were relevant for new, um, for new, um, uh, what do you call it in English? Um, Fonds. What's the name for? So for big, um, let's say buckets of, of companies to invest in, yeah? And they created new ones concerning the topic of sustainability. And the interesting point is that at that time then, who were the investors for that? Pension funds. And the pension funds are the biggest investors in the world. Few people know that, but you have to know that. They are really having billions, hundred billions of dollars, yeah? And they are not those funds like hedge funds who invest and you know, try to squeeze out the most out of the companies, but they're investing for good for a long time, like a family. So they're very good investors. You like to have investors like them because they stick to you. Yeah? They like the idea that you are more sustainable as a company. Yeah? So they were totally enthused about that. Yeah? And, and then we achieved a good ranking and a very good ranking and even better. Yeah? And we were best in the industry and then best in Germany even. And, and that was cool. So that was one thing. Yeah? And then the other one was risk management. Yeah? That of course, there's always this topic about human, human rights, environmental topics. And we noticed that we are, if we are more knowledgeable about that, if we have good processes, um, about what is happening within the company. If we even know what our contractors and subcontractors are doing, we, we do active risk management. Yeah? And last but not least, hey, if we do good things, we can talk about it. Yeah? Um, and at that time, no one did. And then we started to issue a sustainability report. Yeah? Nowadays, it's mandatory for many, for, for many, especially for the multinationals, right? And then we also found out, oh, in Brussels, they're discussing laws coming in a few years. Yeah? So all that together helped us to promote um, the whole idea. And after, I think like two and a half years, um, we ended up going to the World Summit on Sustainability from the UN, from the United Nations to, to South Africa. And we went there for three weeks with a big exhibition, with lots of events. Um, and we, we had only one, let's say, one sponsor within BMW. He was not super high in the hierarchy, but neither low. 
he was just two years before he was retiring and he said, what the heck? I give you all the money I can, uh, I can organize and we do that, yeah? So we went there, we organized this big event. You can look up for, for, for pictures. Uh, if you just Google BMW World Summit Joburg, Johannesburg, we had this big, big event just in front, in front of the, the, the big conference hall where all the presidents from the world were coming. And all of a sudden, the board members of our company wanted to go there and represent the company. And that was the turning point. Yeah? That was the moment when all of them all of a sudden noticed, hey, we can gain a lot with that. So we can do good things and we can um, also create a good reputation and, and you know, and, and, and yeah, um, gain in, 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 in public opinion. And that's what I meant with, oh, you don't have to fight, but you have to find solutions. Mm -hmm. And later on, my own boss or my, my own management said, well, Chris, to be honest, I still don't like the topic. I'm honest with you, but I have to acknowledge you guys have done a tremendous job and it's very important and we built up that department for that. Yeah? And that's what we got out of it. Yeah? So for, for career building, it's not the best thing maybe at that time, but for the sake of the topic, for my pro personal purpose, it was the best thing I could have done. I like I like your your point of view because you're at the the real starting point where sustainability was not such a big topic like it is today, um, and it was quite special to go that way. Um, maybe I, I can um, just tell a bit about um, how how I got into this topic. I um, was just going to wonder <laughs> because I know Lisa. Yes. We know each other very well, but I know that you that. For you personally, the topic is also very relevant. So what, what, what is your story yes. behind that? Yeah. Um, so I think when I started to study, um, I started in Weimar, media, media management, media culture. It's quite um, social, social related and philosophic, I think. I think sometimes I had the feeling of uh, my brain getting some, some cracks. Um, but it was quite a time where I was really thinking where I want to go and I, I really I didn't know where I wanted to go um, and then I had this tipping point where I just visited a class um, it was on international management and um, so not uh, sustainable at the core um, but one part of that um, was um, this, to this topic ethics and um, for example how we can buy clothes made by women uh, somewhere over the sea, um, getting paid very, very low wages for what they do. And um, so I, I quite, a, I, I kind of got catched um, in this class. And um, so I decided to write my master's, master's thesis about the topic of how we can um, establish sustainable business models. Mm -hmm. um, and then I um, had the luck to, to find a working student job here in Munich um, at a social business uh, where I started to do graphic design. So I had um, the ability to not just uh, get into this topic more by writing my master thesis, but also experience to work in a social business. So in a business who's not working for just for profit, um, but um, that is working for a vision and that was that was a very very good experience because um, you learn that um, your the people you work with um, are just more important than profit at the end and um, that everything you do um, the products you're selling um, the marketing you are doing um, the partners you are choosing like you said Christian um, so the partners you're collaborating with, with that those are so expensive uh, in very important parts of a company um, and that was um, the point where I decided I want to go deeper so after my master's thesis I started um, um, in that social business and um, was mainly responsible for um, 
for marketing, but also for sustainability management. And so I worked um, with the common good economy. Um, and that was quite interesting because it is a little bit, um, I think, maybe um, fastener. <laughs> maybe you know the English, right? <laughs> Um, so it's it's a little bit bigger than CSR maybe, or it mm -hmm. goes deeper into the roots of a company. Mm -hmm. um, so, and that's uh, where I got to think about um, why do I work for this company and what do I want to achieve? And I just um, took that feeling of working together with people who have the same vision um, to make the world a better place and um, I took that with me um, and kind of developed my own vision um, and purpose that I took on into my next job um, and that's maybe where where I have a question for you again Christian um, for our second topic or do you have a, a question for me well I mean you were just talking about your vision and I don't know about the other guys here in the call but <laughs> I at least would love to hear more about your vision <laughs> Yes, I would come to that point later because okay. we have that on our list um, when we want to talk a little bit more about purpose, maybe. Mm -hmm. um, and that would, um, would, would be the next point that I would find interesting. Um, how did you experience purpose in your um, experience with sustainability and company? Um, and um, yeah, which role does play purpose with sustainability? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um, well, I think deep inside ourselves, we all have this, I would say, big, big pur purpose. Actually, exactly what you just said. I think deep inside ourselves, we all want to have, or we want all to um, contribute to a better world. And I think if people say, oh, I want this or that and become richer and be the owner of that and whatever, I think it's, if you talk about the onion, it's just the outer layers of an onion. Yeah? It's, it's the outer values, let's say, but not the, the core. Yeah? And if I look at the topic uh, from a, let's say, coaching point of view, if you go deeper into the values of people, usually you, you come to, to a point where you notice that in one way or the other, people really would like to do more. Um, my feeling is that there are maybe people who are closer to their core and who are maybe a little bit more brave to go there and to go for that and to live up to that purpose. Um, while other people don't bear that so much. Yeah? They stay may, maybe a little bit more on those outer layers. Yeah? So coming back to your question, I think if people, let, let me say it in a different way. I think if people really live their personal purpose, whatever that may be, and I don't want to say this is okay and this is not okay. I think if they really stick to their personal purpose, I think they will do something that is good and valuable. I think they will really contribute in a positive way to that world. Yeah? And by doing so, I think not only from a social and ecological point of view, I would say also from a peace point of view, we live in a more peaceful world. And I also, I don't only talk about the big wars, but also about those little wars between neighbors. I think if, if people really live up to what they want to, to do, they won't step into those little quarrels where usually, you know, those are conflicts because there are some deficits elsewhere. Okay. Yeah. What do yeah, you think about the topic? Yes, um, it's quite, it's quite fitting I think <laughs> because um, what I think about purpose and sustainability is um, that if you do something you love and you are really passionate about uh, that I experienced it with the founders of the company I worked with, for example or like I experienced with 
with other people I work with, um, especially at Unternehmertum, where we come to later. Um, but um, what I experience is that you can have just a positive impact because everyone wants really to do that um, and to work on that. And I think in, if everyone can be the most authentic version of their self um, that, and that everyone does what he, what he really loves to do, um, that the world would look a little bit different than today, I think. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that's my vision, um, to help people um, find or become their most authentic self and mm -hmm. uh, just to become maybe some inspiration and um, some equipment, um, how they can um, just create the world we want to live in. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yes, I think um, that's, that's my understanding of purpose and how it fits into sustainability. That's very sweet. Say it again. Say it again. What? <laughs> your vision. No. <laughs> Become more your authentic self. Become the most authentic version of yourself. Become the most authentic <laughs> version of yourself. That's sweet, isn't it? Yes, I, I like, like it. Yeah. It works for me, but it doesn't have to work yeah. for anyone. <laughs> yeah. What do you guys think? I love it. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Great. Okay. Um, mm. Maybe it, because I just got to that point. Um, where so what? What do you think? How do we live um, purpose sustainability right now at the Unternehmertum or especially at um, the entrepreneurship and tech education where we both mm. work? Mm. Well, I mean, I think that what Unternehmertum offers meaning helping people to build up their own startup is one great way to live up to that purpose, to really unlock your individual potential, to really become your true yourself. Yeah? So it can be a great vehicle. Yeah? It doesn't mean that that counts for everyone. And of course, there are also many other reasons why you want to found something. Yeah? And it can also be for things where I personally maybe think, oh, well, to be honest, I don't really admire that. And I think there are lots of, let's say, also businesses which are in a way smart. But if you wonder, hmm, are they really contributing to a better world? Personally, I maybe have a different opinion. Yeah. But I mean, that's for me rather the exception. Personally, I think, and that's what I love with our work as we try to also integrate um, in our work, uh, let's say the personal development of people, um, they have the chance to dig deeper inside themselves and this way also create a type of business that in whichever field again it is, being very technical or in, even in the software field or in the whatever field, um, but to create it in a way that is um, maybe taking one of the words of this online conference, more human. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah I like that a lot. Um, I also think we have, um, with what we are doing, two sides. Um, the one side is um, what, we, what we are giving and the other way what we are living. So on the one hand, we have this learning and transformation part you, you already mentioned. So um, we are helping students um, to find maybe a good business idea, not just uh, a nice to have, but something um, that really solves the problems of mm -hmm. the customers and people out there. Um, and there are so many problems outside um, mm -hmm. and there are great creative ways to have a positive impact. Um, and so I think this is a great thing we can give them. And also um, this personal development part, it's so, so important. And I think it's uh, very underestimated in schools everywhere. Um, you just get knowledge, but not knowledge about yourself. Mm. Um, 
and yeah maybe just the other side um because i think so if um as far as i experienced it everyone i work here together is as passionate about teaching and coaching as i am and that is very um inspiring just to work mm. and then mm. you you just have the feeling you are working together with people who are working um also as passionate as you are and on the same vision mm -hmm. yes Maybe, Lisa, if you talk about this personal development and the coaching, we have to explain one thing because it's not clear, I would say, for uh, people not knowing Unternehmer too so much. Um, as an explanation, in many of our programs and courses, we offer, apart from, let's say, supporting them in their innovation, in the rapid prototyping and on those things, and how to set up the business. So lots of technical, financial, whatever questions. Um, we also um, offer coaching on, a, on two levels. So very often a team coaching and also very often individual coaching. And that coaching is, is of course in such extreme situations as, as it is if you set up your own business, because I mean, very often it's also a difficult time where people usually don't have very much money and they don't know whether it's going to work out and how to finance their life and all those things. So very often people get to critical points and that's just a very valuable, I think, um, um, help for them to, to, get, to get those coachings. Yeah. And, and what I would like to, um, to add that um, we do there already a lot for students and we want to do, and that's something we do in currently, um, offer more and more also for, for professionals, because I think that urge to, to work in the direction of your purpose and what you want to do, that is something inherent for everyone. And so that shouldn't be a privilege only for students, but I would say to anyone of any age. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. I have a question, if I may. Mm -hmm. Of because course. I'm also part part of the audience, right? So um, <laughs> when I'm talking with to my friends uh, at the university, um, I would say um, only uh, like minority of the students are being interested in social entrepreneurship and also in the topics of sustainability. So this is a topic that only few people are usually being interested. How do you actually provoke interest among students on uh, towards this topic? Do you do anything particularly to kind of make them aware how important this is or how, how interesting this is to work mm -hmm. with? And this sustainability topic instead yeah. of um, like very commercial oriented and uh, yeah common topics I would say. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Shall I answer, uh, Lisa, or do you yeah. want to start? Yeah. Yes. Um, maybe here again. Uh, um, I would say my my personal hmm, what do I call that? My personal reason for being is building bridges or being a bridge for people. So again, you were talking about social business and social business is great. But again, I don't want to reduce it and say, social business, good, the other business is bad. Yeah? So for me, it's not about going and leading the people in one direction. That would be for me manipulative yeah? and I wouldn't, wouldn't like to do so, but rather integrating it everywhere. So it's more the mindset behind the business. Um, and there can be so many, so many different ways. Um, I give you a, a simple ex example. If you, if you know the, the, the tech company Ecosia, yeah? um, it's, it's, uh, I, it's, it's basically a competitor of Google, right? So it's, it's, it's a IT company, a search engine, but they combined the search engine with generating profit and using that profit for planting trees. Oh, how cool is that? And they changed the business model to a B Corp business model. Yeah? So it's not for profit, yeah? but it's good for a living. Yeah? So those people live their purpose and earn money. So coming back to your question, what do we do? Um, um, I don't want to tell them what they have to do. So that, that, that is for me very clear, but opening options make it concrete. Um, now, for instance, in one of our courses, 
we integrated the, the field of sustainability as a criteria to, to evaluate the work of students. So we don't tell them we have to set up a sustainable business, but we tell them reflect upon it, think about it, think about how you can make a difference, how you can make things better than others. And if you are really brave, think about maybe even creating a paradigm shift really creating a business around circular economy, a systemic shift, really leapfrogging in what you do. Yeah? I see the potential there. Yeah? I see lots of smart people. Yeah? Um, my feeling is rather that we make ourselves so small and I see so many smart people around who can do so many great things. I totally believe in that. So, so I would say our, our thing, what we need to do and what we try to do is um, make them believe or help them believe in themselves that they are able to do so. Yeah, um, That's the most important thing. And then, of course, we do it via many small things. So one I just mentioned. Yeah, So this is part of our, now in this semester actually we started, of our criteria for creating innovation or business, being in a context of doing innovation for companies or creating their own business. Yeah? Another thing is we look for more companies who create, let's say, challenges for students in that field. Yeah. So for instance, again, now we just 10 days ago, or not, not even, uh, one week ago, um, we gained a new partner and that partner is offering a new challenge for students around circular economy of recycling um, the batteries of electric cars. So the batteries of electric cars it's a huge topic. It's a huge, a multi-billion market, right? And there are lots of problems not solved, as Lisa said. So for part of that problem, we create together with that partner a challenge and students can work on that. How cool is that? Yeah? And, and the next thing is now that we want to look for partners, being foundations or being businesses, for instance, big banks, who maybe partner with us to create a whole program around sustainability. Innovation and entrepreneurship around sustainability. We don't have it yet. But personally, I have to believe, Lisa and, and your partner, you're also in the same boat. We want to do it together and that's what we are working on. Mm -hmm. Yes, um, maybe additional to that. Um, I think social entrepreneurship is often um, yeah, when you think of that, you think of, uh, okay, if I do that, I uh, can't make profits. Um, so it's often, okay, I have to do, to just found an NGO or something like that. Um, but it's not the way and um, the essential is that you can um, do profits and use this profit for good. Um, and so create um, value out of that. And um what we, for example, I like, I like to see that as um, that you see sustainability not as something special or something on top, but natural in itself. Um, and so what we are doing, for example, is um, we are doing boot camps with new manager more stipendiates and um, they get from us, uh, for example, a challenge uh, that we choose ourselves and we um, get inspired by the sustainable development goals of the United Nations. Um, and then the, the students work for one week, for example, on the topic of living sustainable in, in the city and just go out and talk to the people in Munich and find out, find out which problems they have. Um, and that is another point um, because um, if you say, okay, how can we build a sustainable business or how can we create a not sustainable business? Uh, you have the same starting point. You, you always start to look um, which problems are there, um, which problems do the customers have? Um, and you, you always try to solve the biggest problems. Um, and then if you look for the problems to solve, uh, then when you come later, later, then you can 
come to the point, okay, now I am at the point, I got the problem, I got a good solution for that, I got a customer, um, and now I'm thinking about how to build the company. And then you can look, okay, um, I look at my supply chain, um, that there are people who are sustainable, um, who are looking after um, the human rights, um, and their working conditions, for example. Um, I look for my, uh, for my employees, um, that they have good working conditions, something like that. Um, and then you can um, slowly, up to slowly, build a sustainable company. I hope and that answers, yeah. I, I totally agree, Lisa. Uh, and I would go even further. Um, so make it concrete. Um, some people were saying, oh, Chris, um, if we do that, if we integrate the sustainability topic in our, in our work, in our criteria, we reduce the options for students. And I thought, what? I think we just do the opposite. We open it. We just maybe help them to reflect more and not to only create more sustainable business, business but I would say to use a different word, to create a more long-term oriented business in the sense of business also, because I totally believe mm -hmm. that if you create a business which is not integrating such elements, it's not to go, it's, it's going to be much more critical in the sense of success, also money, monetary success, than if you really integrate everything, yeah? Um, so for me, it's about helping students to create yeah, a better business in any sense. And not only in the sense of, let's say, um, human or personal aspects. And I totally agree. I mean, the, 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 the people will be much more happy with what they do. I mean, we, we know that there are surveys on that, that companies who are working in this direction, they have a much more, yeah, let's say, happy uh, relationship with their clients or with their, with their, with their employees. But apart from that, it's also about better business. And I mean, that was, by the way, one of the other things we found out um, at that time when I worked for BMW and we created this, the whole CSR business, that we found out that those companies that are performing better concerning those sustainability criteria, they were also the companies who were much, much more stable, who generated more profit. So as a business, they functioned better. And that's, I think, the, the clear point. And that's the reason why I, I'm a little bit, um, let's say, annoyed if um, I hear people like our now president in, 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 in North America that he says, oh, uh, we don't have the money to do so. Mm -hmm. uh, and I'm not against him as a person, not at all. But I think there's a big misunderstanding. I think you can build a better and more competitive business if you have that in mind. Oh. Definitely, yes. Sorry, guys. Thank you very much for your questions, TJ. Did, did that answer your question? Yes, completely. Thank you so much, Chris. Okay. So we would also like to know your opinion about that topic and the topics. So if you want to share something, please do so. Yeah, your opinions, questions, whatever. Yes, definitely. And you can write or you can talk as you like. Mm -hmm. We're totally open to that. I'll take a contrarian question here. Mm -hmm. Have you ever found in, I guess for you, Chris, have you ever found an, a company where there was something that wasn't sustainable or there were some actions that uh, I think sustainability somebody sometimes gets thrown around a lot and sometimes gets misused. Maybe it's green painting a company. Mm -hmm. Have you ever seen an instance where somebody was trying to do or it just a sustainability just wasn't the right answer, or wasn't the right fit? I mean, I would say like with any other thing you can do that things can work out very well or not so good. So for me, it's not a question about sustainability, but of how you did that. Maybe 
you know, there was something relevant missing. Yeah. And, and of course you have to think about costs. Yeah. And those things. And that's the, I would say the, the most known argument very often, oh, it costs too much money. Right. Um, but, um, I think whenever you look at companies, um, if they dig deep enough and thorough enough, thorough enough into their business, you can come up with new, really good solutions. I mean, let me take the example of a very known company in the field of sustainability. And they were one of the very first players really picking up the topic. You might know them, Interface. Yeah? So they were already in the 90s saying, we want to be a company which is uh, emission free 20 years later. Yeah? So they were, st I mean, they were clear in their goal, okay, of course we still have to generate profit. So they had this long-term view. Yeah? And this company is um, producing carpets. They're actually the world market leader on producing carpets, industrial carpets all over the world. Yeah? And what they achieved doing a lot of research that for instance, now they created a circular, a circular economy around um, the, 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 the glasses of cars, the windscreens of cars. So instead of bringing them on a, on a rubbish dump where they usually dig it in the earth and leave it there. They developed and it took them years, I think 12 years, something like that, a long time. They developed a way to use that material and create the base for new carpets. Crazy, isn't it? And nowadays they are in this year, world market leader in their field. So it's about finding intelligent solutions and having the endurance and the belief in doing so. Yeah. And sometimes it's also luck. I mean, they, I, I also know companies who are today very known for their bio products or ecological products, and they didn't plan on. I clearly have to say that. They're also that type of companies. So there are many ways to get there. Yeah. So coming back to your question, I think, yeah, of course it cannot work out, but then something is missing. But I mean, that can happen to any business that something is missing, right? So for me, it's not a question of sustainability. Maybe um, I have one example that comes to my mind that I read about. Um, so not personally experienced, but I read about that, maybe you too. Um, it's this microfinancing. Mm -hmm. um, when it first when it first started, it was really meant as a very good way of giving, especially women, a chance to to found a company and to make an income. Um, and then it gets so popular um, that uh, there are many many um, yeah companies who offer um, that f kind of financing, and um, so the um, oh, how do I say that? Um, um, the Bedingungen? The circumvision or the conditions? Yeah, or? the conditions uh, for the people who are uh, getting the money. Um, they were just more and more hided and it was just so fuzzy. And then they really got into this, um, okay, I have more and more money to pay back. Um, and so it was not sustainable at all. So maybe this kind of misusing. And I think um, this happens when there is a change of purpose in how these companies operate. When it first got um, founded from um, this um, Yunos, mm -hmm. um, I think he was the founder, um, and he had just the purpose to help the poor people. Um, and then um, they, other companies or other people saw the opportunity to make money out of that. Um, and that's another purpose. Um, mm -hmm. And then, yes, I think you can misuse it. Um, mm -hmm. And then it can also turn around mm -hmm. very quickly. Mm -hmm. Do you have anything specific in mind, Mike? 
No, I, I just, I really wanted to uh, like ask an interesting question in the sense of, you know, make something that's thought provoking. So that was, I was just thinking, mm -hmm. you know, I do, I, I feel with some companies, they tend to be more greenwashing. Mm -hmm. And um, again, I was just also thinking, is there a case where this, this word sustainability doesn't actually fit? But I think, you know, I like those, uh, you're kind of both using the same example of, it is a direction or a value that companies and people can have. But if it's not working, maybe is there, there's a piece um, that's missing. So the, the direction, it sounds like, from what I'm hearing, mm -hmm. the direction is correct. You just don't have the right equipment. You don't have the right process. You don't have something that's causing that to, to not work out. Mm -hmm. yeah. Maybe something that comes to my mind is um, often when you talk about sustainability, you're talking to, at the same time about perfection. So if you're... A, attempting to be sustainable then uh, better do not make any mistakes um, mm. because the people will judge you mm. um, but but i think that's that is our understanding from the sustainability and the expectations we have um, to such companies or people um, who are um, who have the attempt to be sustainable um, and then is the question, um, what is better to do nothing or to do at least a little bit? Exactly. And, and if you, if you don't, um, have the courage to start with a little bit, then maybe you never get to the point where you can be really, uh, going through sustainable company. Yeah. Um, and yeah. so we, I think we have to stop judging people who are not exactly um in the eyes of the others uh perfectly sustainable um, um and just start supporting every company who is uh doing the first steps i don't think what what do you think mike <laughs> on that I, topic? I have um i have a unique take on that because i so with my last job i was a field engineer and part of what we were doing was installing um the meteorological sensors to see how the, the climate was changing and but in order to get there i was flying all over the place so it's on one end yeah i think you you have to take a, a more um global viewpoint of the of this of the topic and sometimes people will get so stuck on this this or this or this okay. And for me, like I was flying all over to many different countries and obviously using and increasing a, um, my carbon footprint. But I was collecting data or um, enabling data to for researchers to understand more of climate science. So for me, it was kind of one of those I, I settled on. It's a necessary evil, so to speak. You know, if we just sit here and don't study it then we don't have anything to work on. We don't understand the problem on a, on a true sense. But, um, but I mean, I, I would come, like to come back to what Lisa said um, about that, that thing that if a company puts up that label of being sustainable, that people tend to attack them and, and they actually have to be 100% like kind of holy mm -hmm. to not be attacked, right? Um, and I totally agree, Lisa. Um, any attempt to improve is a good attempt. And of course, some are ultra successful because they will do, uh, really do a, a, a paradigm shift and others just improve a little bit. Um, but I think the topic behind is, let's say a deeply human topic of not being maybe really honest mm -hmm. with yourself. I think exactly. great people great people in the sense of with a big personality, they won't criticize the others. They will look at their own action. Yeah. So that is a little bit more than a, a topic of, um, of where are you yourself with your personal development? Yeah. And, and I mean, I totally understand that. It's just so nice and so easy to criticize others because we all know better, right? Um, but it's not leading anywhere. Um, I think what, what is really necessary is that, that we really acknowledge what people do and support them to do more. 
And that's what I would like have like like to be seen. And uh, yeah. Um, maybe with a look on um, the clock. Uh, do we have another question or another um, opinion who wants to get shared? Um, I have actually a small uh, uh, comment on that. I think it's also important uh, to see where the founders or the people who are initiating the venture are coming from and what kind of background they have. Because, for example, if I'm taking an example of Armenia, where I'm coming from, a uh, topic of sustainability is just emerging now. So we are still, we are just starting to re realize that, okay, using plastic bags, bags is bad and we should switch on to paper bags or we should completely, you know, get rid of plastic. So I believe uh, this is also um, probably people who are coming from more developed countries who are, who, and who are more into uh, these topics, who re read about this, listen about this more, they are more inclined to start a business or to initiate something on the sustainability um, topic rather than people who don't really maybe know even about this. So I think it's also important to educate people on this topic first, and then maybe this would provoke some interest in them to you know, initiate something. Definitely, mm -hmm. that's a very good point. But the funny thing is that, I mean, if you look back, almost every or pretty much every society in a way was sustainable. If you look long enough back in history, right? So what, what I want to say there is it's not something where we have to look in this direction. Those people know and the others don't know. Uh, I think deep enough, we know what is sustainable business. Yeah? So what I want to say, education is good, but education is not an excuse kind of. Uh, and I, I mean that also in my, my own um, direction. Yeah? In a positive way. Yeah, yeah I, think, I think education in, in case of becoming aware of that, um, and have maybe the sense for that. Um, I think it's also maybe a point of priorities. Um, if you just have other things um, like you, okay, um, I just don't know how to get food on the table. Um, you have definitely other priorities um, than thinking about where does my food come from. Mm. Um, and so, yeah. Sorry, Tedwig, you said something, but I didn't hear it. No, 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 I was just agreeing with you. <laughs> I thought that I'm, I completely agree with you. Yeah. yeah, and I mean, picking up the topic, I mean, one of the classics is, right, if you talk about uh, whatever, peasants um, cutting down the trees in Indonesia or Brazil or wherever, right? Um, it's, it's just too easy to say, oh, they are not allowed to do so. I mean... That is just exactly that thing. I mean, in the end, we all live in a system, in a very complex system. And in the end, it's us who are profiting much more from that than they are. So it's just, I would say, for me, it's a little a kind of a cheap excuse to point at them, but not at look at our, our own action. And um, um, a very good example of, of course, I also would like to see that they don't do that. But I know I'm not the one in a position to criticize because if you are at that poverty level, you do what you can do to save your life and your money and well, your food basically, right? Yeah. Oh. Any other comments or questions? Yes, we have time for one more question. Yeah, Mike. I have a quick comment on that um, as an example, you know, and I think it just goes to show that I've been in some um, not super rich environments and communities that I've worked with. And one of them, one of the first ones was in Eastern Nepal. Um, you know, there, there were people, it, it, the, the economic situation was just very different from where I grew up. But even then they still made sustainability in this small town a priority and they did they took all the steps they could you know most people had enough food and they they were covering those bases 
And even at uh, that stage of development, they were still making sustainability a priority. And they, so they outlawed plastic bags in their town. And they found, so they employed um, people who were making bags um, by hand that were made out of cloth instead of plastic. And that ultimately was just one thing they could do to take the next step to be more sustainable. So wow. for me, it's like, even if you're in dire situations, I think there are still um, steps that can be taken once education has kind of taken root a little bit more. And in that sense, I totally agree concerning education. I actually had a, um, a similar but opposite experience as you had, uh, Mike. Uh, a long time ago, I was working on a development project in Nicaragua. And at that time, this country was one of the very poorest country in the world. Uh, really torn down by civil war. People were earning the salary I got there from a local point of view was the equivalent of one bottle of beer, local beer for the, for, uh, with the salary of one month. I mean, it was nothing, right? And what they did with the money they earned, they were buying insecticides, fertilizer, herbicides as a cooperative cultivating coffee. So why so? Because they didn't have any clue how to do different. The knowledge of how to, how you could cultivate in a different way was just lost. Yeah? And the whole project was about helping them to help themselves, right? And about showing them, let's say, new plants to create a fertilizer themselves. Yeah, for instance, yeah, simple things. And one of the big learnings, to be honest, for me was, oh, it's quite difficult um, to open the mind to that. Um, at that time, I really have to say um, my, my, let's say, my respect for women raised very much because there I learned it was more the women who were open for those new, let's say, ways of cultivation, while the man said, no, we can't do that. We have to go do it as we learned it before, using insecticides, et cetera. So in that sense, absolutely education. And uh, for me, it was a big learning, um, how difficult that can be. Thank you. Um, Mike, maybe I want to uh, take a point that you said um, as a, as a um, last point, because I think it's a good, um, end to this uh, very interesting conversation um, the point that sustainability can be a chance and that it's not an exclusive or special thing or it's something that you put on top and that is more expensive but something that you can really um, um, you can start from zero and you can see it just as a, as a chance um, to build with what you have instead of maybe compensating for what is missing. Mm -hmm. um, so I would say um, thank you very much for the discussion and for your questions. Um, I would love to discuss further, but the time is up and it's Friday evening. So I think we're all going to have maybe a glass of wine <laughs> now. It was very nice uh, talking to you. And um, if you have another questions, um, just write it in the link, LinkedIn group um, or connect. Um, I would like to hear more of your opinions about that. Um, and if you have any questions, um, feel free to come to Christian and me and talk about it. Yeah, and thank you so much, Lisa, for hosting that session. <laughs>